how does this help me? Well, if I now return back to my original question, and I'm going to grab it uh, from this point here, I would say. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to uh, simplify what's going on with all of my arguments and that kind of thing. So maybe I should actually um, point out that I am doing a different line of argument now. So I'm going to say, return to the question, because I've now established that foundational knowledge which I mentioned we're going to need. Uh, this is the equation that represents the set of points that I'm after. So how do I get this into a form so that I can use this knowledge here? Well, I said that this was in rectangular form. That was half true. You can see um, there's the imaginary component, there's a real component flying around there. But Z, because it's just written as Z, it's not in any, that complex number is not in any form at the moment. So I could write that as like e to the i theta or something like that, or um, r cos theta plus i sine theta. I'm gonna write it in rectangular form though, because rectangular form is Cartesian form and I'm trying to get to a Cartesian equation. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say, if Z is equal to, I'm gonna write this as not A plus IB, but X plus IY, because I wanna end up with an equation that relates X's and Y's together. That'll mean about Cartesian equation, okay? If Z equals X plus IY, I can just do a substitution. Everywhere I saw Z, I'm gonna write X plus IY. So that gives me this, arg of X plus IY plus I equals arg of X plus IY minus three. Okay. Now this is progress. Now we really can get towards rectangular form um, because I just want a real component and an imaginary component, right? So to do that, on the left-hand side, there's not much work required. Um, the only in, uh, real part is just the X, so I'll leave that out the front. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll go one better and I will, what did I use before? I used orange for the real part. So I'm gonna go write that like so. And then here comes the imaginary part. Now I'll factor out an i, and then when you think about, well, when I factor out the i of this, what do I uh, end up with? You can see you're going to have um, y, lots of i, and then one extra lot of i. So this is just my, uh, you know, rewriting this line above just to really separate out the real component and the imaginary component. Okay, so far so good. Let's do the same thing to the right hand side. So I have the argument here, and this time to get the real component separated out, um, you can see both this x and this minus three, they're, they're both real. So I'm gonna include them both here, x minus three, and then my imaginary component will just be y. All right, so. How does this help me? Well, um, I now have this in a form that looks exactly like this. You can see I've got the argument of the uh, rectangular form of a complex number, the Cartesian form, okay? Now, in order to sort of tease out all of this and to turn it into much, something much simpler, all I need to do is take tan of both sides, right? If these two angles, that's what arguments are, they're just angles, right? If these two arguments really are equal, then tan of those arguments will also be equal. So I'm gonna take tan of both sides. Um, when I do that, tan of everything you can see here, this is gonna be a rather long line, but we'll do our best. Uh, tan of this angle will equal tan of this angle. I'm going to use this result that we saw up here um, to then get rid of all of the tans and the arguments, I'm just gonna get x's and y's um, and some other constants because that's what I'm after, a Cartesian equation, right? So all I need to do is say, uh, what's the imaginary part? What's the real part? And then I just take the quotient, right? So let's have a go. On the left-hand side, the imaginary component is y plus one, and then I divide that by my real component, which is just x. So this you can see, this is b over a, it's just that this is my particular value of b, this is my particular value of A. So far, so good. What do I get on the right-hand side? Well, the imaginary component is just Y, and then my real component will be X minus three. Hmm, so this is really good. Uh, from something that looked very intimidating and terrible before, um, you have um, made things worse, but then substantially made things better, because now I have something that is all just X's and Y's. There's not even any I's flying about, there's just um, some simple real numbers that I can deal with. Okay, so some of you might be thinking, what's the big deal? Like, this does sound like it's better than trying to draw a graph and you know, intuit your way through it um, using some kind of insight that maybe might be hard to access. 
Well, things do look nice right now, but I have to give you a caution. Um, I want you to notice that um, this set of, um, this equation that I have here, right? Um, they're rational functions, as it were. Something divided by something, something divided by something. Now, in a minute, I'm going to cross multiply and I'm gonna get rid of all of those fractions. But in their present form, and this is very important, the fractions have denominators that kind of mean there are discontinuities in whatever this function is going to be equal to. If you have a look at the denominators, you can see um, x, sorry, yeah, I'll keep that. x can't be zero from this, and x can't be three from this. So um, the discontinuities that I notice are that x can't equal zero, and x can't equal three. Now, this is really important because I have to do more than just exclude zero and three from my solution when I get it at the end. Um, in fact, what's going on is that um, when there's a discontinuity, the thing breaks and can behave very differently, which you'll see in a second connect back to the, uh, the graph that we already know should be the answer to this, which we saw at the beginning of the question. So I'm gonna note those discontinuities, and um, once I've simplified out this equation, we're going to explore the implications of those, right? So um, let's go ahead and cross multiply like promised. So what I've got uh, on the left hand side is uh, y plus one, x minus three. That's that cross multiplication. And then the right hand side is just x, y. All right, let's uh, expand this thing on the left hand side. So uh, I will multiply y by both terms first. That gives me x, y minus three y, and then I'm gonna multiply everything by one. So that gives me plus x minus three. My x, y is still hanging out there. Um, you can see there's an x, y term on both sides which we can eliminate, so that's nice. Um, if I rearrange a teeny bit um, by adding three y to both sides and then swapping the sides of the equation, you land here. Um, and then lastly, just cause um, this is my favorite form for a, an a equation of a straight line, I'm gonna divide both sides by three which gives me this in slope gradient. So, um, I have an equation. I have a Cartesian equation. It's marvelously simple. Um, I know you were probably panicking when we got to this point here, and even this didn't look very good in particular, but as soon as you saw that x, y come out, I hope you thought, ah, oh, thank goodness this is going to be something lovely. But, um, we have these discontinuities to deal with, right? Now, like I mentioned before, like I alluded to, these discontinuities, they do more than just punch holes in uh, the graph that we're after. They, in fact, break our graph into three separate regions or three separate cases. Um, if you wanna think about it this way, um, if you wanna think about all the potential x values, and of course there are y values that correspond to this, all the potential x values now sort of sit in one of three regions. Um, you've got zero and three where you have discontinuity. And then you've got this section over here where x is less than zero. We want to work out what's happening over there. Does that part of the graph satisfy our equation or not? You've got this section in here between uh, zero and three. And then you've lastly got this section here where x is greater than three. This is the key shortcoming of the algebraic technique. Because we have never appealed to a graph at any point, I can't just look at the graph and say, oh, it, it can't possibly be, you know, that you can't have a point there because it wouldn't satisfy the um, geometric reasoning that we've used to come up with this line. You just have to plow through the algebra. We have to test um, a spot in each one of these regions to determine whether, um, you know, it actually satisfies the equation or not. Uh, this equation up here, which is just one line after the one we started with, okay? 